Y'all know what this, you know what this is, right? The, uh, <clears throat> the guy that lives in here. What's his name? Genie. Yeah. Hey, you know what this is, right? You, ha have you seen the movie Aladdin? Basically, this guy named Aladdin finds a lamp with uh, a genie inside of it, and this genie is willing to grant him three wishes. So, with the sky as the absolute limit, Aladdin gets to pick any three things, and they're gonna happen. I wish for a trillion dollars my own personal donut machine. Not, I don't wish for donuts, bad wish. Wish for a donut machine, make unlimited donuts. Aladdin isn't used to getting what he wants, so this is pretty exciting for him. Now, unfortunately, Aladdin is just a movie, a very good movie, but I don't, I don't know anybody who's actually found a magic lamb that housed a wish-granting genie. But I do know that we can all relate to what it feels like to just wish for something, to want something, to hope for something so much that we'd give just about anything to make it happen. I wished for something when I was in middle school and it was a cell phone. See, all my friends had cell phones and I thought if I could just get a cell phone, I would be so cool. I'd be able to talk to all my friends. This would be great. I wished for this, I asked for it. I kind of wished my parents would get me one and eventually my parents said, sure, you can get a cell phone. You just have to pay for it. So my wish ended up with me getting a job. Now, maybe what you want right now is different than what I wanted back in school, but I bet you can relate to how I tried to make it a reality in my life. I asked about it all the time. I thought about it all the time. I tried anything I could to make it happen. I even went as far as to pray to God that it would happen, a lot. Right now, we're talking about habits that can help us connect with and know God better. Habits that help us develop an everyday faith. Habits are these routine behaviors that we tend to do a lot. They're things that are on repeat in our lives, things we do every day. And our good habits, they have a way of making our lives better. Spiritual habits are things we do every day to help us grow our faith. They're things that when we do them, they help us to know God better. They help us to have an everyday faith. And one of the best spiritual habits we can develop is talking to God through prayer. I guess that a lot of us think about prayer the same way we think about that genie in a lamp. We go to God with our wishes, our wants, our hopes, but if he doesn't answer our request, we tend to toss him to the side. Now, have you ever gone to God with a request that you felt like he didn't answer? Maybe you wanted to make the team or pass a test or see your TikTok go viral. So you put in the effort to practice or to study or to learn the TikTok dance. You prayed and prayed that it would pay off. But when the results came in, they weren't what you hoped for. Or maybe you've taken some bigger things to God in prayer. Maybe you've prayed that he'd heal someone you loved or that he'd keep your parents from splitting up or that he'd help you through a painful situation with a friend. But things didn't turn out the way you prayed they would and it left you feeling disappointed, confused, and frustrated. No matter what we've prayed for, when things don't happen the way we hope they will, we can begin to question not just our prayers, but God himself. When our prayers aren't answered, we may start to wonder about God. Does he hear my prayers? Does he even care about what I'm feeling or experiencing? Is he even there? If you've ever asked any of those questions or felt like God was silent when you prayed, you're not alone. We've all felt that way at some point. We've all wondered how prayer can actually help us know God better when it feels like he's not there at all. How are we supposed to connect with God when the connection through prayer feels broken? What if I told you that I think the reason we feel that way about prayer has less to do with God and more to do with us? Think about some of the other important relationships in your life. People you're close to and connected with. People like your parents or your siblings or your best friend or even your small group. What do you talk to them about? What are most of your conversations about? I doubt each of you spend every FaceTime chat, hangout, DM, asking them for things you want or hope for. Why? Well, for starters, they probably don't have the ability to do the whole genie in the lamp thing for you. But more than that, you talk to the closest people in your life about more than just your needs, wants, and wishes because you want them to know more than that about you. And you wanna know more than that about them as well. In other words, you want a real relationship. And I don't know about you, 
But that's the kind of relationship I want with God too. See, God wants to be much more than a genie granting wishes. He wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to connect with us every single day, and he wants us to know him. Prayer gives us a great place to start. Prayer is a habit that helps us have an everyday kind of faith with God. Maybe the reason we're frustrated or hurt or ready to give up on God when he doesn't seem to answer our prayers is because we're approaching prayer with the wrong mindset. A long time ago, there was a guy named Paul who dedicated most of his life to traveling around teaching people all about God. Paul was convinced that knowing God was the ultimate goal in life. He believed that a relationship with God was better than anything we could think of or ask for. And Paul wanted to make sure that everyone else, all the other believers knew that too. Paul spent a lot of time like writing letters to the early churches to encourage them. And what's interesting was that a lot of these churches were going through really rough times. The government was coming after them, people were trying to keep them from talking about God, and they were even being threatened on a regular basis. So it's no surprise that the people in the churches were praying a lot. They were asking God to save them and protect them. They were asking him to get them out of the mess that they were in. When Paul wrote to one of these churches to encourage them, he let them know that he was praying too. But his prayer was different. And I think what Paul said here is something that can actually change the way that we think about prayer. Here's what he wrote. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. Did you catch that? Paul didn't pray for protection or for their situation to end. Instead, he prayed that they'd grow in their faith, that they'd keep getting to know God better no matter what happened. Of all the messages Paul could have possibly delivered, why did he choose that one? I think it's because Paul knew that prayer is so much more than just asking for God's help. It's about so much more than wants and needs and requests, even though God wants to know those things too. Prayer is ultimately about getting to know God better. Talking to God helps us know him better. When you pray to God, you're talking to him about your life. You're telling him what's happening in the world and asking for his help to figure it out. And you're learning more about his love for you, his compassion, and his perfect plan for your life. That's a relationship. And whether you realize it or not, that's what prayer is really all about. It's about being in a relationship with God. Sure, getting everything you want would be super nice. And certainly, I'm not trying to say that it's not disappointing when the things you pray for don't happen. But what I'm saying is that even when the answer is no, prayer still gives us the opportunity to know God better than we did before. When your prayers aren't answered, talk to God about it. And when everything turns out just like you had hoped, talk to God about that too. Because talking with God helps us know him better. So let's change the way we think about prayer. Let's think of it like having a conversation with God. For some of us, that's gonna be really easy to understand. But for others of us, carrying on a conversation with God sounds really hard. Some of us have been taught that talking to God means, means bowing our heads and closing our eyes and folding our hands together. But the truth is, we can talk to God in a lot of different ways too. We can talk out loud to him while taking a walk. We can sing a song. We can even write our thoughts down in a journal. Connect with him in a way that works for you. And this week, I want you to commit to giving prayer a try. Remember. You can talk to God about anything. He wants to hear what's on your mind. You can start by praying like this. First, thank him for all the good things in your life, like your friends or a sunny day or a vacation from school. Talk to him about the things you're grateful for right now. Next, tell him what's worrying you. If you're concerned about the health of a loved one or feeling left out in your friend group or struggling to overcome a mistake you've made, God wants to hear about it. Sharing the good and the bad allows you to appreciate the way God loves and forgives you no matter what. Then talk to him about what you need. God wants to know what you're thinking. So tell him, ask him for help where you need it. Pray for him to step in and fix things that feel broken. Ask him to remind you that he's listening and working for your good, even if the answer doesn't come the way you want it to. And finally, trust him. The more you talk to God, the more you'll get to know him. And the more you know him, the more you'll trust him. The more you trust him, the more you'll want to talk to him. Because talking to God helps us know him better. And when we make a habit of talking to God, we make learning about him a part of our everyday faith. One of the best places to start when it comes to prayer is in your group. We created these groups to be spaces where you can not only connect with God, but connect with other people. And your group leader is a great person to help you think about how you pray and talk to God.